Newton's Jug of Thoughts podcast. I'm good. Hi. What? Oh, Jesus. I got a turkey club sub today. My okay, turkey welcome club. to the ca- <laughs> Jug of Thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> In case anyone out there was wondering what I eat for turkey lunch. Turkey club sub. <laughs> it smelled delicious. It was very, very good. It's the one sub from, uh, that they from nail. Gas and Grill. Yeah. They, yeah. Na- they nail that one every single time. Like, it's the one that every time I'm, I'm like, I know I'm going to get the exact same sub. Yeah. I've heard guys say that about, you know, we always talk shit about, like, an Applebee's or an Olive Garden, but, like, guys who travel. Yeah. Like, you know how you go to, like, the little area right outside every airport in America is, like, the same thing? Yeah. There's, like, a t- there's a Starbucks, there's a fucking Olive Garden. Yeah, it looks fucking, exactly the same. They all look exactly the same. <laughs> but, like, traveling guys are like, I like that because I'm guaranteed, I know what's going to be there. Like, that, to them, that feels like home. Sure. Like, that's their hometown place, because sure. the Olive Garden in Sacramento is the same as the one in Nebraska. Right. It The layout's the same. The people have that same dead eye. How are you today, sir? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. And if he goes to, like, tries to be interesting and go to some, like, off-the-wall, like, cool, hipstery place, it might suck. And then he's like, well, fuck that. I'll just go to the Olive Garden. It's guaranteed. Right. You yeah. Know? I can see that. Yeah. The Olive Garden's so go always to Gat- good. <clears throat> Gas and Grill, guaranteed turkey club every time. Yep, every time. And the rest of their food is good, too. But, like, that one, yeah. for whatever reason, it is always exactly the same. Yeah. And I, if there's one thing that I love, when I love something, I love, love it to be exactly the same when I go to get it again. Consistency. <laughs> yeah, consistency is key. Yeah. I'm preaching that to the kitchen at the jug for years, and uh, we we seem to have it now, I think. so. Yeah, because people like something. They get it once. They love it. They had a great experience with it. We're talking with the Oma Gang guys about the experience yeah. of all these things. Yep. It's not just like I put it in my mouth and it was good. Like the whole <laughs> night. Like they remember that great night where we had that great thing and right. with that great meal. And we all laughed and drank wine and this band played some very inappropriate music for a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, they had the experience of it. They want to go recreate that. Yeah. Um, absolutely. Yeah. You can recreate some experiences Friday night at the Jug. You sure can. The 21st, when Friendly Foes and Roy G. Biv roll into town, the Orange Corner show was fucking great. It was really good. So we're doing that again with Roy G. Biv, who are also a phenomenal band. Yeah. And we so. got some tricks and some and some fun stuff, like we did last time with the bouncy balls. Right. The bouncy balls worked. Yeah, we, we just uh, need more of them. Yeah, we just we keep upgrading, though. Every week or two, we upgrade a little bit. <laughs> okay, yeah, you guys got lights. Yeah, we got lights for all the tables now. There are... So now explain the concept of this. So the concept of this is that we we felt, and I think some of our customers probably felt, that we weren't providing quite the best service that we could be, well, know, the whole, to, to be frank. The whole model has changed. And... Yes. Because people can't approach the bar. So, yeah, with that being said... Which is the we, way it's been for a thousand to... years. Right, exactly, which is very difficult for people to get a concept on, yeah. including ourselves. You can't, <laughs> you know. Dude, literally, like, we went to bars in Ireland that were, like, it was, like, in a cave. Like, it was caveman shit. Yeah. It was, like, the first thing they did was, like, they all woke up and discovered that they were man. They yeah. figured out fire and the wheel and all that shit, and then they built a little thing, <laughs> and one guy stood on this side, and the other guys walked up to the other <laughs> side, and they served him fucking and booze. And they got drunk. <laughs> it's literally been the way since the dawn of man. That's it really how it's has. been done. This is the first time in human history where that relationship, not and thing. you as a bartender, that's just fucking crazy. It's fucking horrible. Yeah. So we've been slowly but surely, you know, you and I coming up with most of the plans. Yeah. Um, imp- I was saying you just drone and then drop kegs <laughs> yeah. on people's tables without telling them. Right. You know. Which it, I, I found wasn't the best plan. <laughs> excitement, you know. You're already out. Been exciting. You're already out in a pandemic. These people don't care if they die. Yeah. <laughs> They're living dangerous. <laughs> Uh-oh, we hit that guy. Yeah. <laughs> um, so anyway, I got these, uh, yeah, it's dark, obviously, um, in most corners of the outside. Yeah. Um, we've got the tenant area, which is lit up, so we can see all those people fine, and those people we can provide pretty good service to. But it's the outside area um, that we can't, 
because uh, we can't fucking see them. So we're running around all these tables that don't even really need service, right. asking if they need service. And then by the time we get to a table that does need service, they, they're like, we've been waiting for 15 minutes. Yeah. I'm like, sorry. You we know? forgot you guys were out here. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were a raccoon. Honestly, I heard some <laughs> rustling. <laughs> Well, so, because so are you doing the thing where you're looking at the table to see empty drinks and like, okay, there's a bunch of empty drinks, so let's go take care of well, those. And that's another problem with this whole thing too, with the whole outdoor area, is it's all cans, so we can't uh, see inside the cans. <laughs> so it's huge, yeah. God like, damn it, god damn, Cuomo, yeah, it's one problem really. after another, really. <laughs> Fucking Cuomo. So I have bought a bunch of hockey puck sized LED lights that you just hit the top and the light comes on and they're bright as fuck. Yeah. And if we can't see you, then there's a fucking problem. <laughs> All right. <laughs> like, so you, when you need service, whether it be one of you or your whole table, hopefully your whole table, <laughs> then you just hit the button and we'll be there most likely within like a minute or two yeah. at the most. As you know? soon as... uh yeah, I, yeah. I think, do it. I think this is going to change everything. I think that's what. Well, the concept is sort of like an airplane. It is sort of like how you boom, and then the girl comes back to your seat. She knows exactly where she's going. We'll be faster than them. Oh my god! Yeah, what the fuck's <laughs> taking so long up there? That's a whole other thing. That's the second <laughs> half of the show. Delta, I'm looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, that, well, we have had several ideas. One of mine was you do get a cart like that. Yeah, like yeah. from the airlines, which is not a bad idea. <laughs> and then you roll it up, and it's got beers in it. You got the bottle of wine that you can pour into glasses for people and they yep. have the drawers with all the shit and you can roll around and do it rather than back and forth back and forth back and forth but you have to be able to hit people in the elbows because that's whole part of it you know sure sure dress them like stewardesses but we'd have to go also in that situation we'd have to go back to mini bottles and cans of pop again because you yeah. can't you can't drag the gun around you can't drag around a whole big that fucking chart of <laughs> well you would have to have like or you would or have, we could just do beer just, and wine no beer and wine or you have like big bottles you know what I mean? Like, you have, like, your big standards. You have a vodka, a whiskey, and a rum or something. And if yeah, people like want Yeah, like 1.7 vibes. Yeah, like, like big liters. And then fucking when people want, you know, a rum and coke, they can just fucking pour it up right there. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, but the lights, that's a, that's a whole other thing. Right. The the lights is a brilliant idea. Yeah, it's, it's sort of like a whack-a-mole thing. It becomes a game for you guys. Which makes me a little nervous. <laughs> well, I'm right. worried about people getting drunk and just constantly playing with it. Yeah. And then us being like, that's it. We got to take it away. <laughs> well, my first idea was like getting people to do it like with the music. Yeah, I know. Like while me and Peter are playing, the like, lights no. are going off with the beat. I'm like, how fucking cool would that be? It would be awesome. Can we and just. It would be really cool. <laughs> suspend service for like a minute in the middle of a jam and just like we could do that and the whole thing. And I'm like orchestrating the flashing with. My, oh, that'd be fucking great well i but, mean if you wanted to do something like that we could announce a time yeah or something you know like make sure no one's gonna get it Everyone, no, they no won't. one's gonna there's just gonna be in that three minutes someone's gonna be like, where's my fucking beer <laughs> <laughs> they're just gonna get confused or you could just do you could announce at the beginning of one song like yeah hey everybody we're not going to do any service for the next song yeah so which would quite frankly would give me and the other bartenders a chance to regroup yeah um and you could be like <laughs> so play with your lights to the music yeah <laughs> someone's been shouting free bird here it is yeah. I'll give you guys a nice 17 minute break <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In a God and a Vita. <laughs> yeah. That's what old radio DJs would do. Right. The guy had to fucking drop a deuce. He'd be like, here's a fucking In a God and a Vita for you. Yeah. Here's a playing in the band from uh, Europe 72. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> um, yeah, the lights, I think, is a great idea. And, you know, listeners, just be considerate with the lights. Like, you know, everybody, and that's the way it's done everywhere else. America's the only place where it's like, mine, me, now. Like, yeah. Ireland and everything is like, your table finishes, and then it's time for another round. Right. You all drink your rounds together. Sure. You know what I mean? Like, so kind of do that. When your table's ready for another round, hit the button. Yeah. He'll take care of everybody. The whole, instead of one back and forth, but that's just crazy. So all you candy asses out there, we're talking to you. Step up your game and finish your drinks with the rest of the table. <laughs> and it's the back and forth shit. I mean, like we said, the, the whole concept of the bar, it's called a bar. Right. And they're like, what if we took that whole bar part out of it? Yeah. <laughs> it kind of fucks the whole thing up, dude. It really fucking yeah. does. Um, but yeah, we're figuring out ways to do it. Yeah, we've been, uh, you know, we've been coming up with some really good ideas, I think, you, you know. Both, both of us, and and because if you keep, and then you're worried about the people standing up because they do, and it's hard to not to because once again, for the last million something years, that's how people have been hanging out. Right. 
Um, oh, and read the sign. For those of you who are coming in, please read the sign. <laughs> because the sign pretty much gives you the night's instructions. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I see people, they go up. They read the sign, they walk around the sign and come straight to the bar. <laughs> Line two is do not approach the bar. <laughs> because they're probably looking for like like a menu. And if it doesn't say like cheeseburger, the first word they see isn't cheeseburger. They're like, oh, this is not, I don't want that. Yeah. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> Just say like free lap dances and then underneath that <laughs> put all the shit. Um I don't know. Yeah, man, you're, you know, pe this is all new for everybody. I know it is. And, you know, so I'm I'm being just as considerate as most of our patrons have. Been. I find it a challenge. You know, I find it it's I a find challenge it for sure. Enthralling. It's it's how do we get a we did the porch show? A lot of my friends bands are like this is the first band or first gig we played in 4 months. I'm like, "Yo, we never fucking stopped." We yeah, just I know. Kept going. We started doing live streams, and then we started doing fucking porch shows and yard well, parties. I, everybody and shit. that's been calling me to play, they're like, "We just want to play." Like, yeah. we haven't played in so long, and I'm like, "Really? We have yeah. a band every weekend." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but because of you know, we got to get around these fucking wacky technicalities. So the lights is a brilliant idea. Yeah. So I think that's gonna help. Just everybody be considerate with them, and please don't drop them. <laughs> oh, there's gonna be a life, a fucking light fight. Yeah. I that was see hard to your say. light is larger than mine. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody who giggled at me there, you try to say that. It's hard to say. <laughs> I was going to say knife fight, and I was like, oh, no, oh, that doesn't happen. <laughs> no. A light fight. Well, yeah, we don't need a knife fight. No. A light <laughs> fight. Like a light fight. Yeah. <laughs> Not a heavy fight. Not a crazy. heavyweight yeah. fight. A nice light fight. <laughs> you know. Featherweight. Yeah. Um... Yeah, so you're sort of a uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind situation. How yeah. they communicate with the lights. Right. All right. Like, Dude, yeah, yeah, Morse code the order. So you don't even have to go take the order. They Morse code the order. You can pick it up. All right, we need some uh, military personnel to come train these people. Oh, dude. <laughs> I saw the best shirt the other day. It's a flying saucer <laughs> beaming down on these people and says, it says, G get in, dummies. We're about to do weird butt stuff. <laughs> <laughs> how did that become a thing i have no idea how did that become but it's definitely a thing anytime i say it people know exactly what i mean <laughs> every time someone's like i was abducted by aliens the first question is did they put something in your ass yeah, did, <laughs> did, did they probe your butt <laughs> where did that start <laughs> i know even the aliens are like dude what the fuck <laughs> yeah <laughs> we travel galaxies it's amazing that we even got to you and that's the first like, this thing's probably gonna fuck me in some way this thing's gonna put something in my butt <laughs> yeah. Long it is fingers. the most bizarre fucking thing like, just one of those rumors like the richard gear gerbil thing yeah where did that, that start real? it's gotta be it's <laughs> it, i don't i don't think he's ever come out against it no. so you know his silence is deafening <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think an alien put a fucking gerbil in Richard Gere's ass. <laughs> so there's just thousands of people walking around with gerbils up their asses. Yeah. And they don't know. He's got, I guess, yeah. They just like kind of blacked out one night. They saw a fr flashing light and then they blacked out and woke up. And ever since then, there's been a little rumbling down there. Just thought it was gas. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know how that started. That's really funny, though. Like because that's like a major... Worm. Yeah, that's like a major thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I got into the dog food again. <laughs> <laughs> that's like a major... Like, that's the... That's our whole... People are talking about alien shit because, like, the... the like uh, Air Force has said there's, like, UFO sightings. We don't really know what it was, and it moved kind of weird. So, like, people are like, oh, fuck, they're going to say there's aliens. They know there's aliens. They're just easing us into it. Because yeah. you can't just tell people. It'll blow our minds. Right. It will change our perception of everything. Well, it'll just kind of solidify some people's. I think there's got to be something else out there. This can't be it. That's too right. depressing. Um, <laughs> but there's, like, it'll it'll change the way we look at ourselves in the universe. Uh -huh. It's the big, it's a huge question. Yeah, that would is. change m mankind. And the second question is, <laughs> did these things put something in your ass? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if ass rape should be the second question. <laughs> That's the first thing on our mind. <laughs> wow, this changes our whole perception of the galaxy, and we're going to learn this changes everything, man. <laughs> follow-up. Quick follow-up. <laughs> uh, yeah, subtext B. How does your butt feel? <laughs> you can put something in my ass. <laughs> the aliens are like, what? <laughs> yeah. What kind of a question is that? The fuck are you talking about? That's the first thing you want to know? You don't worry that we come in peace? Like, we might be here to blow you up. Right. 
They're like, if you're going to blow me up, can you do it before you put something in my ass? <laughs> yeah. Please. Oh, well, if you're out there, you're listening. <laughs> this is our... This is, I wrote that spec script for the X-Files I wrote. I don't know why they didn't pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> it um, had to be good. <laughs> yeah. So we got lights at the jug. That'll be fun. Yeah. That'll, that will kind of seem like we're communicating with a fucking helicopter above us. It, it will. Someone's. It is like an SOS. <laughs> like SOS, I need a beer. Somebody has been running a drone around at like three in the morning, like every yeah. night. Mm-hmm. Like every night that I, if I get home late from work or if I'm just having a night where I have a couple people over and they leave like around then, I'll go out and have a smoke before I go to bed. I hear it like above my place. I can never see it because it's dark, but right. there's something up there. <laughs> and uh, Did it did, did it put anything in your ass? No, my, my butt has felt fine every morning, so... Um, Lucky me, they must not. They well, must not like my ass. Fucking fly it over while we're doing a show, while we got the lights and all the stuff going and all the people out there. Maybe we'll spot it with Maybe the lasers great. this weekend. Yeah, put some fucking lasers at that motherfucker. Yeah, a nice aerial shot. Uh huh. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, the Roy G. Biff show is gonna be dope. We got yeah, the I'm next excited. week after that is uh, Day of the Dead. Right. Celebrating the Grateful Dead. Yep. Uh, we got, we're going to do acoustic sets, uh, earlier in the day. We got two electric sets. There's going to be a lot of jamming. And mm-hmm. then as always at the end of the night, we're going to play a dead show on the wall, the stone wall of the jug. Yeah. I'm really excited. And you had a, your, your buddy, right? Had like a whole archive of shows. Uh, not a whole archive, but, but yeah, a he's, lot. he's got some. Yeah. yeah. So, well, um, some grateful dead shows is like 150. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> they played like thousands. There was a guy actually at the jug last night that I was wearing a dead shirt, and uh, he was asking me a ton of questions about the dead. Like, yeah. he's like, I just don't know anything about them, which was it's fascinating. Yeah, I've been reading two books like this week. Yeah, it's fascinating. And like, even if like I don't listen to him, like I'm not like I don't listen to him nearly as much as I did. But I guess now just being a dude who's played music for a while and put on shows and yeah. I can, like just reading about the inner workings of the business of the grateful dead like i'm sure. reading it as the grateful dead as a business right it's fucking fascinating yeah it was a clusterfuck constantly yeah. constantly they fired a manager like every two weeks and then you'd be like sorry dude and then had him come back and then there was like a different <laughs> dude and then i read one called fare thee well which was about the 20 years Girl, between when this. jerry died and, he, and they all just fought and everyone was phil and his wife versus everybody else and you're like Ooh, it's kind of but i am glad I, I i talked to you when i was halfway through it right and i was like yeah this book's kind of bumming me out dude yeah <laughs> like but then when i finished it they finished with the fair the well shows with trey which is a huge success okay so it has a happy ending good so it did cheer me up a little bit good that's good <laughs> and yeah, you, know, you, you didn't see him yourself that day it's a way i was like because i'm just you, you never fucking fly too close to the sun man never meet your heroes <laughs> yeah seriously <laughs> you're like these guys are a bunch of crabby old fucking <laughs> you know i don't know but i don't know i've never been in that position <laughs> so yeah, i don't know how right. i'd handle that shit either but it is, no. it's just mad funny, man. Them stories are crazy. I was, And then that got me down the rabbit hole of reading about, like, Aerosmith and the Eagles and, like, top ten craziest things that the Eagles... Like, I read that Black Sabbath came into the... Stu- after the Eagles did Hotel California in, yeah. the, the, in the studio after their sessions, they finished the record and then Black Sabbath was the next band to come in. Yeah. And they're like, there was, like, a pound of Coke, like, in the console. <laughs> like, yeah, the play- like, you would just be, like filing just lot just dust everywhere the, right the eagles just the room was covered in it and it was just yeah. like what happened who was here before yeah and like the eagles like are you serious <laughs> it wasn't like it wasn't us or like zeppelin or some crazy <laughs> badass fucking band right this is the fucking sex pistols or something like nope it was the eagles <laughs> you know there's some crazy stories don henley got himself into a little trouble you all can google that yourselves <laughs> 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 Um, what's going on? What else is going on in the jug? Um, well, I mean, we got the open mic tonight, obviously, which has been going really well. It's, it's really picked up. Uh, I'm still trying to book a gig with your uncle, but, um, well, I talked to him about doing a podcast too. Oh yeah. And getting the whole Thurman brother story down. Oh, that'd be cool. On record. Cause I mean, and I actually brought this up to a few other people. They're like, dude, I'd listen to that. Yeah. Cause it's like, it is just Western New York, New York music history. It really is. Those motherfuckers. Made their, they, they put a huge mark on this fucking area. They, they played one of my good friend's graduation parties. Yeah? 
That was my, that was my introduction to the Thurman Brothers when I was 17. Yeah, and they ripped some Almond Brothers in your face, you know? and you were like, fuck yeah. yeah. And I was like, these guys rock. Yeah. <laughs> They're fucking awesome. And they have just the piles of stories. But I would also like to just get it on record. So after every show, someone's like, okay, so your dad is who? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? And I'm like, my dad's Paul. He's the oldest. Listen, <laughs> listen these to were, episode 67. He, these were the guys who were in the band from 1983 to 87. Here's the guy. Here's the roster of the band from 87 to this time. <laughs> yeah. And now if we do that, I just can go, episode 68. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> go fucking research it yourself. Yeah. I, I, do, I do that with certain stories. Like, people ask yeah. me to repeat stories, and I'm like, look. I'm like, it's like right around episode 20. Just go on. Yeah, I can't. Like, I'm like, I can't this. just tell this story 400 times. Like, yeah, I can't break this down anymore. <laughs> you know, I mean, it was fu- it was fun the first couple times, and it's always fun to tell on the show. Yeah, of course. You know, but um, that's going to be the best version of it, right? But uh, you know, then it, it it starts to lose its luster for me. Yeah, you know, and then I feel like you're not getting the best performance of and and the best uh, uh, intake on the on on what really happened. You know, yeah, and when it's just bombing. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's like I'm a bad comedian. <laughs> yeah, I'm just having an off night. <laughs> yeah, which sometimes I just don't feel like fucking telling the story, and then and then I'm like, I don't want to tell it right now because yeah. then they're gonna be like, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you didn't give it the oomph. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's all about beats and time. You can never right. plan it. I think a lot of people like, and I do. I would did this for years. Right. You had a, a story would happen. And then I would, in my head, be like, I would try to, like, write the story in my head and make sure when I do this, I want to have it right. And I'd go through it in my head and be, like, prepared to tell this story and all the nice beats. And then it would never go as well, and it kind of felt forced, and I was rushing to what I thought the funny part was going to be because I was desperate. Right. And it just kind of, like, pushed it out. And yeah, you got to just go, like, I know it's there. It happened. It's right. in my head. My experience of it was there. I will, in live on the show, work our way through it. And yeah. that will be the best way to get it. That'll be the funniest way to get it. And um you know, then then it just feels a little more genuine than just like here's right. the thing I rehearsed. Right. Well, like the troll story, for example. You know how many times I've told that story now? Yeah. I told it on you and on the Thurman and Lala podcast seven years ago or something like yeah. that. And that was probably the thirtieth time I had told that story. Yeah. <laughs> so imagine how many more times I've told it since then. And, I don't uh, know if we've ever told it on this show. What? That doesn't seem possible. I th- I don't know. I think I always in had many, it in the list. In many regards, it's considered the greatest story ever told. That's pretty <laughs> fucking amazing. Yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, but um, I don't know if we I, have. I told it not that long ago. Like maybe I mean a little while, like three to six months ago, probably. And, like an old ancient Indian. And uh, and I just like yeah, <laughs> and I I uh, I didn't give it. You know, I didn't want to tell it that night. Right. And I right. was just like, I was having an off night. I, was, I think I was kind of like miserable at work and like, just like, uh, and like, they're like, please tell him, please tell him, please tell him. And like, finally, I was like, <laughs> and they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's funny. But and I was like, you didn't was, get the pop. No. And I, I think I skipped a couple parts, you know, yeah. like, because I was just like, I don't want to do it, <laughs> you know. Fine, you're gonna make me do it here. Here it is. And they're yeah. like, they're like, oh, all right. The best used to be when people would come up to me and tell me the story, and I'd be like, where'd you hear that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway. yeah, I don't know if we have. I'm gonna have to look back, or I uh, won't well, look here. We'll check let's, the let's be honest. I, I don't really feel like doing that. Any of you listening, <laughs> yeah. if you don't know what the fuck we're talking about, let us know. <laughs> And we'll tell the story again. Yeah, we don't want to check the archives. No. We don't I feel was, like it. I thought about it for 10... <laughs> right there, you just heard me think about what that would entail, and I was like, fuck that. Right. <laughs> so if anybody doesn't know the troll story, and you listen to this show, then we haven't told it. So, right. you know, and if you do know it, you're going to hear it again, bitch. I don't know. Skip it. Fucking... Yeah. Maybe we'll put it in for, like, uh, episode 75. Yeah. Or maybe we'll really make you wait and do it on episode 100. There is a story <laughs> that there's a story that ties into the Grateful Dead, and it, God damn it, I should have looked it up. Um, all right, <laughs> it was a story that I've like when we talk about festivals and shows and stuff, and and I'm like, there's this really weird memory I have, and I don't I don't know if I've even properly processed it yet, and I'll bring it up one day, and and I and then the other day I was flipping through Instagram and I saw a picture of what appeared to be like a brother and his little brother like on a hiking trail. And the little brother was sitting in this contraption that was like this triangle-shaped thing Mm -hmm. with two big-ass wheels on the back 
and like littler wheels in the front. And it was like a little, like almost like a fucking super intense wheelchair. Okay. You know what I mean? Like just some super like off-roading mountain wheelchair thing. Sounds but like boxcar Willie. Sort of, yeah. Sort of like a fucking yeah, Terminator boxcar. Like mm-hmm. a, I don't know. It, but it definitely has a medical vibe to it. Okay. And it's like this crazy thing. And I've never seen another chair like that except for at the 2008 Rothbury Festival. Okay. And when I saw the picture of this chair, I was like, because <laughs> it goes to the story. So this festival, there was a lot of weirdness going around at the time between the group of people who went, and it was just kind of weird. And we, like we had graduated, and like one of our friends fucking died, and like not there, but like that yeah. year, you know what I mean? It was right. a turbulent time in a young man's life. Yep. In my younger and more vulnerable years, mm-hmm. uh, it was just the whole fucking thing was weird. But there was also like some of the greatest fucking nights of my life, and I saw some of the greatest music ever. It was a blast. It was amazing and huge inspiration to like the shit we do now with the fucking lights and the stuff at the with at our shows like that. Yeah. That was, oh, the Disco Biscuits baseball bat story. I don't know if I ever told that one. <laughs> that was that weekend. Okay. So the last night, Phil and Friends are playing. And Phil and Friends was the shit back in the day. Yeah. They had Jackie Green with them. I was like, fuck, dude, they're fucking killing it. But it was the last night I was on Mushrooms. And uh, <laughs> and it was just kind of coming down after the four days of the thing. So it was like just a little spaced out. And, like, my two buddies were fighting. And it was just fucking weird. So I just was by myself in the crowd, just isolated, just walking around, looking at this the this crazy Grateful Dead world that I had immersed myself in. Sometimes that's the best. It is. the. I would always 100% just walk away. Yeah. Just I wanted to be by myself. Right. Just pockets full of whatever I needed, just walking around by myself. Yep. Especially a festival where there's like five different stages you can go to. Sure. Fuck yeah. Oh, I miss that shit. <laughs> God damn it, Cuomo. Why'd you do this to us? I know. So I'm just wandering around the yard and at set break, Phil did two sets. At set break, they played Lost Cause by Beck. Uh-huh. You know that super sad song? Uh, tired of fighting, fighting for a lost cause. It's a beautiful song. Right. But it's a fucking bummer. Okay. And I was like shocked. I was like, who, why are they playing this? I was about to go be like, who's running this shit? <laughs> they were a bunch of hippies in a field like, yay, sugar magnolia, happiness. And yeah. then they just put on the most bummery bummer song. Huh. So that kind of flipped me in a weird state of mind. Sure. I was already weird. It was already kind of feeling weird. Right. But enjoying the weirdness. Obviously, if I'm there in the first place, I like when shit gets weird. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm just kind of already weird again. And Phil starts playing again, and I'm wandering around the crowd. I just can't stop walking. I'm pacing and thinking and processing and all this shit. And you look down at people, and especially at dead shows, you're just going to see some weird shit. You're going to see some weird people. Yeah. Some just like, wow, that person has not been in a bank in 30 years. They would have kicked him right <laughs> the fuck out. Like that, that person does not exist in American culture at all. Right. And then... I was walking, I walk past this one cluster over here and my attention's drawn to it and I'm looking at, I'm trying to figure out what I'm looking at and it's dark and I'm tripping. So, you know, that's, it's hard to see. Yeah. And fucking what I see is like this, like, I thought it was a fight at first. It was like people on the ground, like rolling around. That was like a fight. Something was happening. Someone's like dying. You're always scared of someone just dropping dead at those shows. Yeah, I know. And there's movement. I see like a lady and then I see like a guy, like kind of like side of his head. And they're, like, viciously making out, like, dry humping, like, going crazy. And then, like, next to them is one of these funky bike things. Uh Uh-huh. These funky little trailer or fucking dune buggy things, big wheels on the back, and this triangle shape. I've never seen one before, but it definitely had a weird... I'm like, what the fuck? And then she's on top of him, and out from under her, I see what can only be described as a child's legs. What? So, like... Uh, exactly <laughs> I'm already here I'm already there and I'm already like what am I what the fuck am I looking at right now <laughs> and they were like going at it dude like making out like I think they were straight up fucking like Did dick he just out have dick a through gigantic the zipper. cock and it looked like a baby leg no I think he had I think he had a gigantic cock and baby legs <laughs> and I this is what okay and I kept walking because I couldn't stop moving but like I definitely took note of that and then walked away and was now I'm walking before I'm walking through the crowd with this whole identity crisis all my friends are fighting my world's crashing down why are they playing this sad song shit right and now i'm like what the fuck was that what the fuck (laughs) (laughs) this was like i'm like all right and i now my whole mission of the night was to strategically keep circling back past that situation sure and seeing what it was and every time i walk by like dude i could feel the visceral 
like sexual meth energy coming off of these two. Yeah. Or this one and a half or whatever it was. Yeah. And like, dude, they were, I swear to God, they were just straight up fucking with like clothes on, like in the field. Yeah. But like this dude had like baby legs. And I think that was like his wheelchair. Like he was like oh, disabled or something. Yeah. And, and like that was his wheel. They had this space age thing I've never seen before next to him. And his baby legs coming out and they were like fucking <laughs> like right. passionate. Holy shit. Uh, basic instinct fucking <laughs> like, wow. in the field every time I walked by for like the solid whole set like I'm right. like and I'm on drugs and I, everybody <laughs> else is on drugs and yeah. I'm like dude it just was like my brain still can't I'm still not 100% sure on that whole situation wow, but that's crazy that, like you can put yourself in that my, my shoes oh absolutely you can put yourself in my brain I've been to many many shows and seen some weird ass shit seen some weird ass shit <laughs> that was some weird ass shit and like no all power to him dude maybe like alright dude's got some fucking thing he got hurt he's got little legs I don't know people, yeah crazy there's a two headed girl out there somewhere like, shit happens to people sure you know I have a massive dick it's medically <laughs> <laughs> no but when, Sam Leone does <laughs> We he's, talk- he's gonna love that <laughs> well Thurman and Lala episode whatever he talked about it yeah um so fucking it's it, you know so sure whatever but I'm saying like their whole thing is maybe they're like they go to these festivals and they get all jazzed up on drugs and they like to just drop in the field and just get down right and no one ever says ch- and anything because when they approach them they just kind of go oh, what's what the fuck's happening right now yeah are they having a threesome with a midget? Who's the other? Where's his legs? <laughs> what the fuck is going? I don't know, dude. But it was dark too, and uh, my vision right. was impaired. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That just definitely put me. Everyone's like, "Hey man, how's the show?" I'm like, "It's good. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. It was great." And all the power to them. If that's a couple and that's their thing, fucking, I'm not hating. No, I'm just no, saying. No, definitely not. I'm just saying. In the state of mind I was in, and the place I was in, yeah, definitely just another just pile of you know like uh, like you know that mean so he was a tripod i don't know but it was like too little no he was like a like a reverse centaur <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean Re- well, I, I, reverse I meant be, t-rex i meant because he had three baby legs oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. sure <laughs> sure i don't know i didn't get a glimpse of his he dick he was a reverse centaur <laughs> he was a ver- reverse t-rex is really what it is because okay. t-rex is a little long you know what i mean yeah so I, he had to be packing because this chick was fucking going nuts on this little guy. All right. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I was, he was shoving his leg in her. I was. Oh my god! <laughs> He's just got three little legs. <laughs> one time. <laughs> how, how do you buy shoes? You got to buy the two pairs and you throw the other one away. <laughs> Andy was like, uh, me and him were. Did I ever tell you about this? We were fucking in rooms next to each other. <laughs> Oh, and he was doing... <laughs> he was pretending to be me. Yeah, that's really funny. And then he was like, oh, my God. He's like, did he just shove his leg in her? <laughs> He's like, I can't even make you make that sound. <laughs> that's that's mad funny. So Yeah, you, that was a good one. Yeah. He's doing a hardened voice from the fucking... From the next room. And yeah. I was like, you're throwing me off, dude. <laughs> that's weird. He's like... <laughs> um... Sorry. <laughs> no, no, that's hilarious. That's I'm sorry. I'm still just I'm back in that field now. Right, right, right. <laughs> I know it just like should have been I don't know if podcasting was even a thing back then. I mean it was. I just don't know if like I wasn't doing it. No. So I would have immediately been like, here's my card. When all the smoke clears, give me a call. Right. I need to know what the story with this is. Sure. We saw a couple banging at Art Park once. That was pretty funny. <laughs> and like I think I told that story. So go back, people. Can't be repeating stories now. <laughs> um, yeah, it's always funny when you see people banging. Yeah, especially when one of them's like a fucking Star Wars character, <laughs> 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 and they're like vigorously banging, like the bomb just went off. <laughs> like, I'm like, you know what I mean? Like they're banging, like the plane's going down. Man, right. that's fucking intense. I felt the fucking energy, and like you're, I'm tripping balls. I'm in tune with the energies around me. Right. So I think if I was sober and saw that, I'd just be like, ah, I'd say you don't see that every day, but eh, fucking right on. But being as highly in tune with what was happening, you know, the energies of the world <coughs> really, really threw me for a loop. Yeah. All right, we'll take a break for a second. I'll leave you with this. I was just going to say, I'm, I kind of felt connected to them for a minute. I think I was part of that. I think that kind of became a three-way for a second, spiritually. Yeah, right? Um, the other day, we were walking by the silo, like by the docks down there, 
and there's like a lower level that goes right by the boats, like the docks, and then yep. there's like the upper sidewalk level. Mm -hmm. So I'm walking on the lower level, and there's a guy walking the other way. He just got himself an ice cream cone coming up the other level. And I walk up the ramp. As we pass each other, he makes dead eye contact with me, and I look at him. You Just, just how you do. You just yeah. glance over at somebody. As he took like a big lick off his ice cream cone. Oh, weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That would have weirded me out a little. It weirded both of us out. You could tell for a second we were like, we didn't mean to do it. It's just, I came out of the thing and he just happened to be walking by and he just glanced over and he just looked and he licked. And I was like, we were both like, oh. <laughs> Uh, Did you feel that? <laughs> you feel that? My whole system was like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> that wasn't intentional, right? <laughs> that was, it was. It was just accidentally so sexual. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean, though. <laughs> it was just act like, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> that's fucked. <laughs> so if you're, you know, if you're having an ice cream cone, you know, sunglasses. <laughs> yeah, sunglasses. Or right. look down. Look at the ground. Okay. <laughs> All right, Captain Drug of Thoughts will take a break. This is the Captain's Jug of Thoughts podcast. It smells like a, a delicious Swedish breakfast diner in here. It does. What is this? Is a wonderful candle, Captain. Yeah. So we uh, <clears throat> we'd like to give a shout out to Three E Home, um, Kate Mass. Uh, and you can get get their candles at you and me on Center Street in Lewiston. Um, they've got uh, quite a variety. They make all their own candles, and uh, they're really, really good. This one's so. called a uh, pumpkin creme brulee. Ooh. I said it fancy. I could have said it you, all Western you did. New York. Meat. Pumpkin cream, creamy brulee? <laughs> Is that like a blue cheese? That's why you got the, uh, that's why you got the ooh from me. Yeah. <laughs> Again, it's delicious. They're so man. fancy. It's, 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 it smells really good. Man. Yeah, it's really, really good. And they will be soon. <laughs> I was going to say, there's a reason we're talking about this. Yeah, they will be soon. <laughs> Uh, producing stone jug candles, which is very exciting. So, um, so what is that going to be? Uh, what is the stone jug? Yeah, like what's the scent going to be? The scent is going to be like, <laughs> a, like, well, the stone jug is a bar. Yeah, <laughs> you've been playing it for over a decade, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, the stone jug scent is going to be the old men's bathroom, <laughs> and uh, it's very exciting because everyone can put this candle in their bathroom and then feel like they're at the jug 15 years ago. Nostalgia's <laughs> big, people. There's a big nostalgia market. <laughs> no, um, it's going to be like a uh, like a sea breeze type, nice. um, and it's going to have a sail on it with the stone jug emblem on the other half, a uh, sailboat on one side, and on the other side it's going to have the stone jug emblem. Uh, I'm really excited about it, and I'm glad to be uh, you know, partnering up with those guys. Yeah, that's great, man. Yeah, so it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be and good stuff. It's gonna be available at the jug. You're gonna like they're gonna be on the tables, all classy, like an Italian restaurant. Yeah, and then we're gonna do um, we're gonna, gonna be do like some a... different ones for holidays and stuff like that. Uh, chili cook off. So uh, chili aftermath. Chili cook off aftermath. Yeah. Oh. That's the one, that's the one yeah. I'm put, put that one in your bathroom <laughs> <laughs> and, and invite your friends over <laughs> for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, uh, no, I'm excited though. They, uh, they're doing a really good job. They're making really good stuff. And, um, I think that, uh, I think it's going to be a, a beautiful partnership and, um, yeah, like I said, we're going to do some different ones over the holidays and stuff like that. We'll make those announcements down the road. I already have a pretty good idea of what they're going to be, but I don't want to, uh, blow the surprise yet. Yeah. 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 There's great things coming. Right. Well, and now you're, you're going to have these at the jug, like lit on the tables. Like uh, like an Italian restaurant, like the Billy Joel song. No, they'll be they'll be behind the bar for sale. Uh, you could buy, well, well you could, that's what I'm saying is that people could buy one and put it on their table and light it and make it a little more romantic. Absolutely, and now uh, you know we might put some on the table once we move back inside. You know, then uh, then we might put some on the table, and then that way you can you can get a real yeah. Uh, you can get the scent. A real whiff of it, yeah. You know. trying to like, say it all nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> get a real whiff of this sucker. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, no, come on, man. That's a fucking gift, too. That's a Christmas gift and a half right there. It sure is. You know, they're going to be... It's going to be a lot of moms opening presents going, ooh. Yeah, and they're going to say jug for one on them. Yeah. You know, like the, uh, like the Doyle sailboat. So 
Shout, shout out to the Doyles because they're they're a part of this now. The oh, Doyle rules. <laughs> There's no O, but yeah, sure. <laughs> um, and uh, I I need to give another shout out to uh, Dave Perot and uh, Bison Logo. Oh, we got shirts. We got a lot of shirts. Yeah, we got uh, we got the Captain's Jug of Thoughts shirts made. So uh, you can order them online, or we're st- we're still looking into maybe coming up with some games for you people. Uh, like some, uh, well, how do you got so set up for them to order them online? No, not yet. You <laughs> <laughs> can't say it. People are going to Google it. You well, can get you them at the just, jug. Come know, into the can, jug. You can come to the jug, obviously, but yeah. you can send us a message and say, Hey, yeah, I want, yeah. You if know. you want, yeah, just reach out to somebody. Right. Text us. I think, honestly, just text one of us. That's the closest <laughs> way to get it. <laughs> yeah. We got to cut out the middleman. Yeah, seriously. We ain't letting Bezos get in on this shit. You got to so. come pick this motherfucker up from my house. Yeah. They're 20 bucks. They're nice shirts. They're you great know. shirts. Yeah. They're really cool. Came Lee up with was going to wear one to our last show. She yeah. had a blue one. Yeah. And she looked adorable. Yeah. But I was like, people are going to think you work there because it was the Jug logo. Yeah. And oh, she yeah. just looks like another hot girl with a Jug shirt on and shorts. <laughs> right. And I was like, hey, you're going to start having to like, That's dude. a risky move. <laughs> you're gonna drink or people are going to be like, where's my fucking drink? <laughs> yeah, um, she'll be coming up to me. Um, Can you get me a? Yeah. <laughs> Here's 20 bucks. <laughs> yeah. I'm saying, oh my gosh, <laughs> the candle thing is great too. Because eventually, when the government cuts the electricity and we can't use those, well, those lights are battery operated. Yeah, but they're going to cut off the battery supply. I'm saying when it goes back to old world times, <laughs> yeah, the candles are going to be the new light. Right. So they light the candle so to you let know. you know that they need a drink. You know what I mean? Yeah. So come get them. Yeah. And then um, they put it out with that little cap. Yeah, we should have them uh, in the next, I don't know, a few weeks or so. Um, I just met with them last night, and we decided on the scent and stuff like that. So they still got to pour them and stuff like that. So give us a few weeks at least. But, Did you um, do a 50 cent? But, well, uh, huh? A 50 cent. A 50 cent. Yeah. Candle? Yeah. Sure. Get it? It's a pun. Yeah. <laughs> well, do you make it smell like 50 cent? Do you make it smell like 50 cents? Like a couple of dirty quarters? <laughs> <laughs> Or like a big bag of weed. <laughs> yeah. I guess motherfuckers call it a slice. A when slice? When they get weed. Yeah, they call it a slice, I think, was like an eighth. Huh. No shit. I'm like, yeah. So you get like a slice and a half tray? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, hey, buddy, uh, we're having a Super Bowl party over here. <laughs> You're going to need a... Uh, that's what... It, what's, what the hell's a nickel? Um, It's like a small round coin with a president's hat on it. Weed wise. <laughs> uh... Uh, like a five dollar bag, like a nickel bag. I, I think that's like shit from the seventies, from like Cheech and Chong. It's totally movies. from the seventies. Yeah, so it's like a five dollar bag. I think. Yeah, because I always hear all the old timers be like, "Yeah, we used to be able to get a nickel." Like blah blah blah. Well, and then I'm there's like, dime bag, dime bag, Daryl. Right, and dime bag. Well, inflation, dude. Nickel bag became dime bag. Right. Now it became slice or slab or whatever the fuck we said earlier. Right. It's a quarter. Yeah, a quarter. Yeah, exactly. Oh my God, it did go up. <laughs> yeah, I think I finally understand economy. I think I might too. <laughs> Holy shit, we just figured it out. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna start playing the stock market. This was our, this was our Gordon Gecko moment. All right, we're going offline. We're, we're choosing a new uh, path in life. New path. Yep. <laughs> Sorry, Can- guys. Candles and penny stocks. This is the last show. <laughs> <laughs> Candles and penny stocks. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to be rich, biatch. <laughs> um, yeah, the Oma Gang thing was great. Yeah, the Oma Gang thing was really good. Thanks again for, for all those guys coming out. Oma Gang, I'm Big looking Ditch, at my, the list I write out. Uh, Community Beer Works. Weird Little Leg Hump Rothbury. We hit that one. <laughs> That's what I called it. <laughs> yeah, that was great, and it was very funny. I mean, obviously, like... The outdoor shows, the uh, sound is a little harder to control. Yeah, it with is. With wind and shit like that. And right. Like, so I was just trying to. There's a little feedback in the beginning, but we got it nailed in. Right. It's not like these nice controlled shows in yeah. the inside where you can control the elements. But uh, it was very funny to me. Like, just, I mean, it's still really, like, it, it makes, I'm full of giddy joy right now. Thinking about us doing a podcast and having 
at minimum 15 motorcycles <laughs> pull up and they're all parking they didn't just drive by i know they all parked at the jug to come eat like one at a time like you were talking we we're trying to like talk through it yeah and i look behind it's just like i know and, like, i was looking the whole time too dude, i just kept glancing over motorcycle like, another backing one. up is another while one. the guy's like yeah we got some new flavors coming out <laughs> it was just but you got to address like that's what those things are fun like right. that shit is so funny to me i know and instead of like being like what the fuck we're doing a show like fuck that dude that's hilarious yeah no it's good that stuff. that is so funny all the shows that were in front of a live crowd yeah dude <laughs> yeah. it's the fun shit the unpredictable shit never plan anything right like never don't try bukowski was right it's douchey to quote bukowski but he was right don't try <laughs> anytime someone tries you know, we all know people who just try really hard they oh, call yeah. it a try hard <laughs> you know and you just you're just like bro just stop trying and you'll be fine exactly and you'll be cool yeah there's so many people out there that try too hard yeah but Especially the people that try to be cool. I'm like, oh, yeah. oh my God. Yeah. But, dude, that shit was so funny. <laughs> Laugh at that shit. Yeah. And then that lady got Bill Pullman and Bill Paxton confused. Yeah, that was like, great. I was like, is this a bit? Is there, is there a plant in the audience? I know. Because, like, people really do do that. They do. And, it take, and, and I, everyone does it. It just shows. It takes me a second. <laughs> and I have to go... One fought the Twister and one fought the aliens. <laughs> That's where I divide, and then I have to figure out which one was. And it was Pullman who did the Independence Day speech. Yeah. If you've never seen uh, the Broken Lizard movie Club Dread, yeah. it's all right. It's not they were bastards. It's not like Super Troopers is fucking great. Beer, right. beer Fest or whatever the fuck was it called? Was it called Beer Fest? Um, yeah. The drinking beer competition where they go yeah, to Germany. Yeah, when they go to Germany. Yeah. yeah. That one was fucking hysterical. Oh, it's really good. They have one called Club Dread. Which is about like an island vacation place, and it, it's like a horror comedy. Yeah, Bill Paxton plays this dude named Coconut Pete. Yep, <laughs> who is like a burned out old musician <laughs> who wrote a song. He hates Jimmy Buffett because Margaritaville <laughs> came out, and he's like, "I wrote Pina Colada Berg first. <laughs> so he's like this drunk who just is bitter, and he hates Jimmy Buffett because he wrote a song called Pina Colada Berg, <laughs> and then Margaritaville came out and got huge. So yeah. he owns this fucking shit. Like, dude, he that is Bill Paxton's finest performance. Yeah. He's good. so fucking funny in that movie. He was really fucking funny in that. <laughs> <laughs> he near Colada Berg. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, and people get him and Bill Pullman confused a lot, which... They, they really do. And it's just because the names are similar, year. I guess. The names are similar. Billy P and Billy P. Bill Pullman, Bill Pat. And they're both kind of that dude who's like, oh, yeah, that that guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. I don't know. They're like uh, Dennis Quaid-ish. Dennis Quaid. Different thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's in there, too. Oh, my God. If Dennis Quaid's name was like Will Pelkston, he'd be like, oh, fuck. There's three of them? I know, dude. Yeah. Where's Randy Quaid been up to? He's fucking nuts, right? He's nuts, I heard, yeah. Yeah, he like, went to Canada. Is he? And he he was like a fugitive, yeah, <laughs> something like that. Yeah, um, I I don't know. I um, yeah, but I heard he went fucking totally crazy. So that's like this is he, our celebrity news section of the thing we bring up. Like Randy Quaid went nuts like right. seven years ago. We haven't mentioned OJ. Well, he just did. Yep, got to make sure we squeeze him in or hot dog. <laughs> yeah, Randy Quaid. Well, there's no like direct news, is there? No, Dennis Quaid adopted a cat named Dennis Quaid. Oh, that's so cute. Oh, my God. Randy Quaid chops up a child. Oh. What? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> kidding. <laughs> I'm just like the, di- the, the difference he between the two brothers. He went a little crazier brothers. than I thought. <laughs> it says, Randy Quaid looks nearly unrecognizable with full beard and mustache. He's looked like that for like 15 years. He looks <laughs> He looks exact. There's no one on earth who looks like that besides uh-huh. that guy. So he hasn't done happy Is there six- a picture of it? Uh, Yeah. I mean, you know, that's what he's been looking like for quite know, a while, dude. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Everybody he rocks that look different. now. But yeah. Everybody rocks that look now. Yeah. The fu- But I'm saying he's had the beard and the, and the thing for, for a while. Everybody right. shaves their head and then does the beard now. Yeah. Which I think is a good look. Because you look at old school, like, motherfuckers who were going bald who tried to, like, hang on to something. Oh, I know. It just didn't work. No, it's terrible. The old comb over, yeah, <laughs> bonehead from Oasis. I love him. He's one of the best. One your of the best. Starts an inch above your ear. <laughs> <laughs> one of the best rhythm guitar players ever. Bonehead in Oasis. Just like, just shave it off, bro. Yeah, and it's like a band. It's like the other two guys are like known for their hair. 
Like, the whole country got their hair cut like Liam. Yeah, I know. And then his buddy is like, just shave it off, man. <laughs> but And he did later in life. He shaved it off and grew the beard. Now he looks fucking cool as shit. He looks right. badass. But in all respect to the to the Brits. Yeah. Um, I don't know, man. I hope I never have to shave my head. I've been shaving my head for over 10 years. I think my shit's... Not made. all the way down, though. I just go to... I do, like, a number two on it. <laughs> <laughs> we. And you can, and you can too. <laughs> number two on it, yeah. <laughs> you gotta fuck with people. When you say, like, can I use your bathroom? And they go, is it number one or number two? You just go, number three. <laughs> what is that <laughs> don't worry about it <laughs> you'll find out when I'm done <laughs> yeah that's that's one other candle oh, now this is gonna be fun coming up with jug candles yeah like uh, so the number three <laughs> uh, sperm <I've>, scent <laughs> sperm scent <laughs> Gee, it's not clever <laughs> I thought that was number three <laughs> number three yeah no it is okay you're right sperm scented candle yeah. that sounds nice dude and you know some feminist bitches like who use jizz as like face lotion now and they think it's empowering or whatever yeah you know that they're gonna have a sperm scented candle like actually it's good for the soul the pheromones or whatever yeah. you can yeah. convince people of that Oh, uh, the number three. What did I say? Chili cook-off aftermath. Yeah, yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So if you guys got some ideas, the Slade Smitty. The Slade Smitty the candle? The Slade Smitty candle. Hmm. What the hell is that going to smell like? Tennessee. Tennessee. It's gotta, we got to take a flight from Tennessee to Florida. That's going to be mountain air. Yeah, some nice mountain air. It's got to have an amalgamation. Smoky things. mountain air. Smoky mountain air. <laughs> The hot dog candle <laughs> smells like hot dogs. Smells like hot dog. Smells like your grill. <laughs> yeah. Smells like Fourth of July. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Do one of the greatest regrets in my life, <laughs> and I've done a lot of really stupid shit. I've said a lot of stupid shit on this show today. <laughs> <laughs> one of the, the one like ten things I've already said should have been one of my greatest regrets. One of my greatest regrets was we were like, we were at that like you know, 10 mile garage sale thing. And we're down out in the fucking stick somewhere. And I'm looking at all this shit. And there was a candle that was a wax candle about yay big foot, foot, foot tall, maybe. And it was of Chris O'Donnell from Batman and Robin. Yeah. <laughs> Which is not a good film regarded as one of the worst films <clears throat> of all time. Yeah. And when I was a kid, I had like every stitch of fucking merchandise from that shit because it was like, Oh, the kid likes Batman. Just buy him all the Batman shit for Chris. Anything with sure. the fucking bat logo on it. Here you go. Right. And and I'm like, I don't know. I just didn't, I don't know why I didn't put an offer. Didn't buy. It. I probably could have got it for like two dollars. It was like a. It wasn't like a. Oh, there's one of those. It wasn't a factory made Mattel candle. It was like, did your fucking kid make this in like art class? Like it was one of a kind piece yeah. of art, of like. Just the who gives a shit character of a terrible who gives a shit movie. Right, right. And it was like, well done. I should have bought that. So if you're out there and you have that, I'll take it off your hands. That's worthy to me. That's, and there you have it. You know? <laughs> kind of bummed out I didn't get that. All right. Anybody out there who's hard up for five bucks? So can this candle company make one of those? That's my rosebud. Yeah? Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I can ask. <laughs> That shit smells delicious. It's really good. It really smells like I'm about to have a big stack of waffles or something. Yeah. With some, like, buttermilky. Yeah, this is, uh, yeah, so you, you heard it here, folks. These candles are worth every penny. <laughs> some comic had a joke that was funnier than what I'm about to say about something about, you know, a candle that smells good but disappointing the house guest or something. Yeah. You just fuck with them. Oh, my God. I could destroy Lee. I could destroy her. I could drive her crazy. Uh oh I, if I got like some like chocolate cake scented candle and just kept oh, it lit, and she came in all excited, and then I just like handed her a salad or something, <laughs> that's she would Phil Hartman my ass. <laughs> <laughs> I swear she to God, might. She would go fucking nuts if I betrayed her like that. I've gotten I, to know her relatively well, and she really might. <laughs> yeah. As I was saying it, I was like, she ain't laughing. Usually she giggles over there. She stopped laughing. <laughs> her eyes got real big. Yeah. <laughs> I'll kill you, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> we made soap for a bit. Well, I mean, we still could. And that was pretty interesting. That was fun. 
She, yeah. she was all into that shit. I helped her build the little soap box where you make the mold and then you unscrew it and put it back together. Yeah. And we had all these like ideas. I'm not going to say them. People are going to steal them. Right. But they were clever ideas. And we would like get a stand at the fucking art fest or something in Lewiston a couple times. And fucking she was shelling soap and I was over there with my guitar playing. And like on a good day, man, you walk away from that shit with some fucking money. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. And I was like, I can see myself doing this. Then after doing it twice, I was like, fuck this. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's a whole culture, too. Just like we say about the Dead shows and the Renaissance festivals and those things. Like, they all kind of yeah. have that vibe. Yeah. You know, people show up with their tents. They've known each other for 20 years going to these events. There's good ones. There's bad ones. There's rivalries, right. which is fascinating. If I was, like, an eccentric dude, like, rich dude. I would fucking just be like, I'm gonna make a documentary about this and just right. follow this scene around the country for, at art shows. Yeah, and just find make like a Netflix documentary about how fucked up these people are, like right. Tiger King style. Mm-hmm. I um, uh, I want to start making my own wine. I it probably I probably won't do it <laughs> because I just I feel like I just don't have the time to take on something like that right now. But make some prison wine in the toilet bowl. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you like. <laughs> you tried to give it to me for a second. You're like, yeah. <laughs> I tried. I do. Have a, that... I do have a bathtub sh- gin shirt. That yeah. How does that shit? Well, it's like potato peels or something. Or how do they do that in prison? They gotta I... let it ferment in the thing. Yeah. We gotta. We should look that up. Oh man. All right. So you want to make wine? Well, it's a thought. <laughs> I'm not like a. It's not like a real strong thought, but uh, I think it would be cool. Yeah, dude, I don't know people who make wine. Captain's jug of wine? Yeah. <laughs> we already got ourselves a... Mm, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, um, yeah, dude, and then you just, like, put years on it that we're like, this is a 72 Captain's jug of wine. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know, just call it that. Just call it the 72. Call it the 72. So you feel fancy when you order it. <laughs> right. Um, You're not going to feel fancy anytime you order a jug of wine. (laughs) (laughs) Captain's jug of wine, yeah. You're going to feel like a fucking flat-out sailor, which is what you should feel like. (laughs) All right. How to make prison wine, the craft version. Oh, this is going to be Los Angeles. This is going to be some hipster shit. (laughs) All right. We need 10 peeled oranges cut into wedges, 10 brown soft apples cut into wedges, one cup sugar in the raw. You getting this shit in prison? I know you're getting something in the raw. I don't know if it's going to be sugar. <laughs> One yeast packet from the female prison. Uh, <laughs> yeast packet. That's uh, awful. Oh, what man. an awful nickname for a place on a person. I know. Where you get that from your girlfriend? <laughs> <laughs> hey, girl, let me get that yeast packet. <laughs> 16 ounce and one cup warm wine. Who thought we could make a toilet wine bit so gross? 16 ounces and one cup warm water. Six ounces of can of fruit cocktail. What? Is that like an actual fruit cocktail, or is it like, give me your cocktail fruit, like prison <laughs> yeah. style? One little, packet of raisins. A lot of gay references in this. <laughs> One packet of raisins. <laughs> Again. Combine the fruit cocktail, apples, raisins, and oranges in one gallon Ziploc bag. Where are you getting a Ziploc bag? Are you getting the slide over, or are you getting the pinch over? I don't see you getting Ziploc bags in prison. I, I couldn't even find this shit all at one store, unless it was a Walmart, <laughs> which feels like a prison. All right. Yeah. Maybe you can get in prison then. All right. So you put all the fruit and all the shit in a bag. You mash it up. Don't pop the bag. Once the fruit <laughs> is beaten into a pulp, add the raw sugar and mix. Uh, at this point, you will be shanked from the left. Elbow him in the jaw. <laughs> <laughs> the white supremacist will take over from there. Find a group. Get a Nazi tattoo on your forehead. This is all optional. Uh, <laughs> add the 16 ounces of warm water to the bag and then seal it. Submerge the sealed bag in a sink of warm water for 15 minutes. In a bowl. I mean, you, you have the time, I guess. 15 minutes? That's it? What are you doing? You're in prison. I know, but I thought it would be like 15 days. <laughs> well, I think that's just this part. This this is the first part of it. I'm assuming there's going to be more. In a bowl, mix the yeast packet with a cup of warm water. <laughs> Where are you getting all these utensils? <laughs> and three teaspoons of raw sugar and wait, for, and wait till it froths up. So you mix all that shit together. The water, the yeast, and the sugar. Add this to the bag of mushy fruit and store in a dark place like you're growing mushrooms. Every day for seven to eight days, pour warm water, not hot, just warm, you know, over the bag and wrap it in a towel and store. Never allow the bag to cool, else the yeast will die. Okay. Mm. I get it. Then that's where it starts fermenting. It'll blow it up from carbon dioxide. You'll need to burp it by blah, 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 blah. And then I guess it turns fucking into booze. All right. 
Filter the contents through a cheesecloth. Where the fuck are you getting a cheesecloth in prison? What the hell is a cheesecloth? You know what a cheesecloth is? <laughs> I'm not it's sure. like a cloth that's like it's like more uh porous. Oh yeah, I know. Where you are. can squeeze like, you know, when you're making cheese and shit. And I've never <laughs> used it for cheese. I've used a cheesecloth <laughs> thousands of times in my life, never for cheese. Right. Always for something for other reasons. <laughs> uh enjoy on the rocks. What are you getting a fucking you getting a martini bar opening up in fucking cell block four? What the it fuck? Sounds where, like it. Where are you getting? All, I don't have any of this stuff at my house. How are you getting all this shit in prison? Can you use chocolate covered raisins? I guess yeah. Have like Make a nice a chocolate, chocolate wine. Yeah, yeah. For Christmas, yeah. I got chocolate raisins in the cupboard right now. All right. Well, there we go. You heard it here first. <laughs> Toilet wine and uh, candles on the way to the jug. <laughs> <laughs> Toilet wine. Um. I don't know, man. We're trying. We're doing something. No, oh, yeah. I know. I don't know what it is, but something. <laughs> we did almost open an accidental casino. That was, I don't know, was that on the show or was that on a phone call? Mm. They're starting to blend together. I know. Um, but it was... Uh, this is why Lee always tells us we're not allowed to talk. Because <laughs> we were trying to come up with like shit because everyone's got to stay seated. So that's where the bouncy balls and the bingo right. and all that stuff comes in. And I was like, I don't know, fucking board games or something. I'm like, dude, you can set up like a poker table. That'd be fun. Like some of the guys get together, like smoke a cigar outside while the band's playing and have a poker tournament. Yeah. And then my head started going and I'm like, would be hilarious if we just accidentally opened like an underground casino totally (laughs) illegally. (laughs) Yeah. Like the real bad part of the casino in um, uh, Vegas Vacation. Yeah. Like one of those. (laughs) Mr. Papa Giorgio. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, that'd be perfect. We should open one of those. <laughs> An accidental casino? Like, oh, yeah. we didn't know. Everyone's wearing masks. Right. Like, are you declaring any of this? <laughs> Imagine if they had to, if you're wearing masks and sunglasses, that that you'd have one hell of a poker face. For real. You would, no one would ever know what you had. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. So, yeah, Friday. Friday, Friday is going to be fucking dope. There's a lot of good stuff coming. Yeah, out. and then come out on Sunday and see um, Pat Stack's bands playing on Sunday there. Right, so, right. Um, so we, we got 23rd, that too. the 23rd, August 23rd. Yep. And, and they, uh, those guys packed the house. They had to cancel their St. Paddy's Day thing, didn't they? Uh, yeah, they did. Because all this shit just started right around St. Paddy's Day. Yeah, so all they did was um, they, they made a shit ton of um, corned beef, uh, and they just did it as takeout. Yeah. And I guess they sold it out. With, I'm sure with, they would, yeah. with Guinnesses on the side. Nice. Yeah. Adapt and survive, people. That, that's right. Adapt and survive. Or, hey, if any of the elites or anybody who's in charge of this shit is listening, just shut it down or don't. Yeah. All right? If you just want if you're just gonna shut it down and this is it and it turns into like the Matrix where we're all wearing like raggedy clothes and we're on some wacky ship somewhere, like and that's it. Let me get in let me get ready for that. Yeah. Don't like this open hey, we're going back to normal. Right. But uh, we are going to install cameras in everybody's eyeballs. <laughs> just, yeah, yeah. Get shit or get off the pot. Right. <laughs> and the world or don't. Yep. I can't take it. Uh, but until then, we're still going to be playing shows. Yeah. Oh, right. yeah, we are. Okay. So. Captain Joke of Thoughts, thank you for listening. Yeah. We'll see you next time. Okay. Bye. This is the Captain's Joke of Thoughts podcast. <laughs> <laughs>